once again, welcome back to the plot. Okay, right. Good morning, everybody. And uh, Happy New Year. It's the first video we've made this year, but uh, it hasn't been an easy start by a long shot. We've had three storms uh, rattled through. I've been poorly with a bad back, and we've lost 100 foot, as well as our two polytunnels, we've lost 100 foot of garden fencing. That's just flattened. But it is what it is, and we've just got to take our time and get through it a little piece at a time. Me and Roy just been slowly well, we had all the benches along the um, the main pathway. We had all the benches attached to the fence. All of them have gone, so we've had to strip them down and divide it, this divide the fence up into sections so we can take it down safely. And then we're going to have to um, think of an idea of how to put it back up. And I think we're going to use stage and tube this time. Bray them into the soil. It'll not be my, be my son or one of my sons. Uh, we'll bray the stage and tubes into the soil and then attach the the panels, uh, the big pallets that we've got up to them season tubes. That's our idea, but we'll do that um, as the season gets on and it gets a bit better. As I say, 14 to go, just after New Year, we felt a little bit better and we decided to repair the main polytunnel that had been ripped after Storm Arwen. <clears throat> we had it covered with the, um, with the, with the net and with staging net just to keep it secure, but of course it all blew off and we thought, well, we'll, we'll Get a new polythene. We ordered it last year. Excuse me. We covered it, and then once again the storms hit with, and it will put a big tear right down one side. So we we'll re repaired that again. We're going to go up the Saturday morning with the help of my son, pull it tight again, and then put some extra screws and lats right along the side of it to make it secure. Lots of people had lots of damage over the over the last couple of weeks. Greenhouses has been completely destroyed. Um, you've got if you're making polytunnels and greenhouses you just got to make sure first I think the first and foremost is uh, the situation in your garden if you can if you can put your greenhouse where you're going to catch your sun east to west is ideal and where you're sheltered against the north or sheltered against the um, <coughs> partly northwesterly where you get them gales coming across like us in the northeast we get the westerlies coming across and um, that's the main thing we try to protect ourselves from but as I say, storms come and storms go. Kind of make a better of it. We've just got to live with it. But that's the situation at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll pop up a plot this afternoon. Yeah, uh, because I've got some work to do on the um, on the sweet peas. That's a must for this year, uh, for this week, I should say. With it being the first video, I've been, uh, I've been doing little bits and pieces <coughs> over the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you remember on my last um, on my last video with sold onions. Uh, and it's not hot in here, it's only a frost free greenhouse, that's all. And uh, the Kelso onions are just ticking over very slowly. I'm in no hurry whatsoever to get them planted. You see it's the big showman on the um, on the internet and some of the onions are up like that. Absolutely massive. <clears throat> if I had to plant them in September, in October, like a lot of the showmen do, it costs you an absolute fortune. I can't afford that now. I can't afford um, I'm not showing, so it um, it was just uh, unreasonable for me to put the heat on at that time of the, of the year and expect a um, I know it's just a hobby to me now, so as I say, I never started the heating off till late December. I've got a little heat wire under this bed here. It's only a small, very small wattage, and I've got my little light and my little heat mat in there, which is next to nothing. But I've got me, I've got me peppers in here. I just sowed them last week, and of course there they are, rumping through. I let the it's a bit there uh, drying out that soil, so I'm going to have to put some water on them today. But uh, what I normally do is when they're that high, give them a good soaking of chamomile tea. You know me. Um, this morning I'm putting me leeks in me pot leeks. I know what nearly the end of January, but it's a perfect time for sowing the pot leeks. Uh, and these are just going to go up the garden. These are going to sit in the melon house 
which is inside the polytunnel, which is always a couple of degrees warmer than what the polytunnel is. So it, it, it's fine for pot leaks, you know, they, I don't need any heat on them. And uh, I'm hoping we're out the worst of the weather now. We're talking about getting another blast of snow over the next few weeks, but um, if it comes, it comes. Uh, I'm not going to let it hold us back for uh, for any longer. Any views that haven't watched for, uh, for programs, any newcomers, uh, I always say, good packet of seed. I was send away, I send away for majority of my seeds, but I've getting a few given, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to try these ones. And of course, these are like elephant. I've never tried them before, but I like to try a different day variety every year. Um, so we're going to plot on with these. As I say, your seed packing, if you're new recording, your seed packing is a fantastic way of just getting you started. It gives you a seed count, it gives you a time of planting, um, what they like, um, you know, what sort of soil conditions. But um, I like to put mine in end of January, beginning of February, and later than that. And of course, you get a nice leak, but with a pencil thick for planting out around the middle, middle to the end of April, which is uh, fine for me. So, as I say, your seed packet, fantastic for giving you some guidance. Always look at the seed count. And on here, we've got 250 seed in there. So, all I've done, I've divided uh, my main pots, nice deep rose pots like I like to use for seedlings, especially for leeks, because I like to get a nice good root system on them, ready for planting out. I've divided it up into six. So, 250 in there, it's going to give you around about 40 seeds per pot which is ideal you'll get a first class leak for planting out as I say middle at the end of April now what I like to do is spread them out in my hand and then just take a pinch a good pinch for each pot now it's my multi-purpose compost it's my own make you go back on a lot of my videos you'll find out how I make my compost the 3 two, one mix I always use this mix for the leaks dahlias and stuff like that uh, but for finer seeds, when I'm sowing, next week I'll be sowing the likes of Labelia and that, I like to use just a multi-purpose and uh, either sharp sand or perlite, so you get no we no weeds at all. You will get weeds growing up through these, but um, once you know your weeds from your seeds, as I say, you're, uh, you're, you're flying. So a good pinch in each pot, and that'll give you around about 40 leeks per pot and it's as simple as that so there's me leak zone anyway as I say the nice deep rose pots so you'll get a you'll get a first class term um, leak grown in them <coughs> now to top it off a couple of handfuls of multi-purpose compost that's all you need I've got the pots about inch inch and a half good handful of perlite as I see I've just got to watch myself for uh, I damaged my back just after the Christmas and uh, I've been to a chiropractor a couple of times it's uh, doing the world of good but I've just got to take it easy and uh, no heavy lifting at the moment so it is what it is Right, okay, so seeds are in, they're pre-soaked, I give them a really good soaking. Um, once again, just another little tip, uh, your water, don't use your water out your butts. If you're planting on the allotment, if you're on the plot and you're taking water out your butts, do not put it on your seedlings or on your compost because it's going to be full of pathogens, full of uh, um, <coughs> moles, diseases, everything that's been lying over the winter. I always like to go upstairs and get some nice fresh water and greenhouse temperature bring it downstairs if it's a day before i don't mind going upstairs and changing the water let's say uh, it's not a problem that trouble is if you if you put dirty water over your uh, over your ceilings over your your compost it's going to spread like wildfire and of course it's not the very best start for seedlings having to push up and then get through that day um, the pathogens and the mo the their uh, the lichens and that that's on top of the mosses yeah it just turns green horrible and it, uh, you lose a lot of your ceilings to start with. So a little handful of a fresh compost on the top, just a handful. It's, it's giving it about a half an inch covering. And as I say, these these are in a tree. 
I never water from above me. Always water from down below. And that's them covered. Really nice and easy. As I say, if you're new to our channel and you want to plot along with her, not a problem. We'll be going from everything from fruit to vegetables to just plotting along with what plot. That's a leaks in, as I say. We've got quite a few bits and pieces growing here at the moment. Um, what, I, what I mean to do this afternoon is to get up and sort the sweet peas out that were planted in uh, late September there, uh, October. Well, these are the perennial sweet peas. I've never grown these before, but I've always wanted a couple of plants to put in the garden here, yeah? and they'll come back year after year after year. So I'm, I'm getting them off to a really good start in here. They're looking fantastic at the moment, nice and strong. They'll not be getting potted off for a, a few weeks yet. I just keep checking underneath and see if there's any roots coming through. But once I get, once them little modules get full of root, I'll pot them up in an eight centimetre pot. Now the um, well, annual sweet peas, as I say, I planted some in September, October time, and uh, they are really bushy. So I want to have a look on them this afternoon. And of course, I've got a load of other bedding plants up there um, that need uh, just checking over, make sure they're okay. <coughs> there's wallflowers, there's pansies, there's daisies, there's all sorts in there. But we're just going to have a quick check through. I'll show you the, the polytunnels, what state they're in. We've managed to get what potatoes put in, we're, we're, as I planted on Facebook the other night. We've got what Chuck of York planted, and we've got what Swift planted. <coughs> Two lots of early potatoes in the polytunnel. And we've got the other polytunnel full of spring cabbage and uh, cauliflowers. So polytunnels are never empty. They always turn around after one crop comes out and that crop goes in. And we make the best use of it. But these, I'll take these up in the garden this afternoon on my trolley. Just well, I've got a trolley because I can't do any lifting whatsoever. Um, I'll take these up, we'll put them in the in the melon house where it's uh, temperatures are fine, they're hovering around about the 40 mark, you know. Uh, it hasn't, we haven't had any freezing weather over the last uh, week or two, which is a, a good thing. I, I brought all the strawberries inside because they had just been at the top of the 100 foot greenhouse, uh, which was open to the weather, and they were absolutely frozen solid after the last batch of frost that we had. So I brought them into the greenhouse. Just to let them thaw out nice and slowly. And then what I'm going to do next week, I'll make a big mix up. Yeah, this will be for next week's video. I'll make a big mix up and we'll get the strawberries potted up into the nice big pots and they can go into the polytunnel on the shelves and hopefully we'll get some nice early strawberries from them. It's just there's lots to be doing at the moment. And down here, the only thing I have got in here is you can see I've got the onions in here. I've got some Welch onions that I've just started growing. Um, I'm trying out this here. Uh, I've got all the all the cuttings, all the our, our vine cuttings, um, two or three different kinds of them. I've got some black currant cuttings there. So, you know, I'm just there. Uh, I always find something to do in the, in the winter months just to keep us ticking over. And you see, there's uh, there's quite a bit of the polyanthus I've potted up. Uh, I've got them potted up and took them up the garden the other day. I've got there in the polytunnel, nice and safe. <coughs> I've got some fuchsias down here that are just starting to come into, into growth. Um, so, you know, we're, we're plodding along. It's, um, it's nice to be able to come downstairs in the back garden. I mean, at the moment, the sun hasn't climbed above the roof yet. Well, we don't see the sunshine here till um, till around about mid-February, early March, when it climbs over that the roof. That's the only trouble with this greenhouse in the back here. In between the two houses in the morning, I'll see a little bit of sunshine here, and then that's it. There'll be no more until at least at the end of February. I'll see it in the west, I'll get it here with tea time for a couple of hours. And then it's here March, by March it should clear the roof, and I'll start and get a bit of sunshine in the greenhouse in that day. That's a big difference, that. Compared to being up the pipe tunnel, if the sun's shining, it's absolutely beautiful. You can walk away all you want in there, you know, and just uh, get a few of the jobs out of the way. So that's what we're going to do this afternoon. We're going to pop up there, have a look at the state of them. The wind's dropped completely now. The, uh, yesterday it was blowing a hole. I went up there and I thought I'll try and repair a few of the, the holes around the sides, but it's just too strong a wind. So Saturday morning, me and Roger and the sun's going to go up there and we're going to uh, pull it nice and tight, get the holes repaired and screw all of that back on. And hopefully that'll, that'll fix the problem. And then 
Hopefully by the end of them, it'll be better when we get started putting that fence back up. It's just one of them jobs. Everybody suffers uh, damage over the winter months. Unfortunately, this year has been uh, been horrendous for us. As I say, both polytunnels decimated in uh, that 100 foot fence. It's a massive job, but uh, I'll get a load of timber, we'll get some bits and pieces, and we'll just start putting it back a section at a time. But uh, it's a job that's going to take a few months. But, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. We'll crack on. So, upstairs, cup of tea, get me gear on, and we'll get ourselves up the plot, and uh, we'll get these sweet peas sorted out and just have a little look around for our first video. Um, as I say, let, let everybody know I'm, I'm still here. Um, and hopefully we're going to have a, a cracking new year. So let's get started, okay? See you at the plot. Okay, right, well, we've managed to get up the plot here. Uh, I didn't bother yesterday because the wind's got up again. Of course, it's been blowing the whole year all night. Which were two small 8x6 glass greenhouses are fine. Uh, no damage done to them. But uh, I'm afraid the pathway is it's another story. Uh, all our fences away. We've got a 100 foot of fence in here going from right at the top of the allotment right at the bottom there. And I've just got to take my time walking through this in case I trip up. I've already I've already pulled me back so here we've got a, got a nice gaping hole in the fence the next door's garden. Well it's supposed to be a garden but uh, never mind. We'll get this put right over the next couple of weeks. We'll just take our time, we'll take, because all, all these are big, large pallets, we'll take them all down in sections and uh, renew the post behind them and hopefully, <coughs> hopefully that'll do the, do the job. Coming into the first tunnel here. Well, this is the one we recovered. Uh, unfortunately, the wind got underneath the pallets. Uh, the um, the lats that were put along the bottom, the, the wind got under them and uh, Start lifting it, so we've got quite a few holes right away along the sides, but of course it's still windy the day, so I'm not even going to attempt to uh, to rectify that. I have got one job to do with the day, I've got my sweet peas to do, so I'll set my trellis up and we'll uh, we'll find some gear, we'll we'll get cracking. But uh, as I say, it's windy as out up there, very strong, uh, gales are focused for the rest of the weekend, so we'll not even bother. We've got one main uh, rod, I've, I've managed to pick out it's over there it's the next it's the next tube I'm gonna put it in here tomorrow in the six foot section of the polytunnel in the middle of the polytunnel and it, it always sags it doesn't matter how tight we get that it always seems to sag so when I get a few more hands up tomorrow we're gonna to push that bit of pipe in and we're gonna put an extra section in here and hopefully that'll do the um, do the job of keeping that polythene up but uh, for the time being that'll uh, That'll do it. I'll go and get some gear. Get me tripod out and we'll have a look at these sweet peas, okay? Okay, right. Well, we're off again. It's a, uh, it's a wee bit warmer inside the polytunnel here. It's uh, still a bit rackety, so I'm hoping it's not going to disturb the, um, the audio too much. Um, one job I've been trying to do for the last couple of weeks was about an inch of water in that tray there, so that's one thing I want to get shot of. Um, and then the cardboard pots that I used last year, I used these for uh, sprouts, uh, cabbages, quite a few different bits and pieces in them, and absolutely soaked them. So what I want to do is to get them out of here. When I come last week, they were absolutely frozen solid, the, the water in the bottom, but as you can see, they lovely strong little plants, growing away nice. So really what I want to do is I want to take out these main runners, and I want to take them down by just cutting them heads off, by right, two leaves, two sets of leaves before they get to the stem. And already they're starting to branch out here. There's two lovely sides you say just starting to branch out. So we're just cutting the, the main runner off. And I'm gonna put these in a tray that's got a couple of holes in the bottom. Uh, so it's gonna get rid of this excess water. Well these cardboard cups I've been getting, uh, I think have been excellent. Um, as I say, I did mention last year, there is an outer bit of covering on it, which is, uh, I suppose it's for uh, when you pick a hot cup up. And a couple of lads have commented on that they might be a bit, um, they might rot down, but they're actually fantastic, they're just rotten. 
been standing in the water, it's just like uh, just like mush. So by the time these go into the garden uh, in about six weeks' time, middle of March, end of March, will be fantastic. But once again, I've got two lovely side shoots coming away. There's two seeds in this pot, so I'm going to treat both the same. Once again, that's the long one. And I'm going to take that down and nip it. The two sets of leaves in that one there. Nip it again, two sets of leaves. So you've got a perfect little plant. There's two seeds in that pot, but they're all exactly identical now, right size. And what will happen now, we'll start pushing out from each of them corners, and you'll get a lovely first class strong little plant ready for planting out. Now that's well grown, that one. Once again, there's two seeds in that one. You can see by the by the length of them, we're going to take them right down. Two lovely side shoots here and a lovely side shoot there, we'll leave them on. And we'll take that down to just the same height as them. Two sets of leaves on the bottom and snip it off. Once again, there's a long one there. Two sets of leaves, snip it off. So you've got a perfect little pot of plants here. And then once again, just go in with your, your scissors, any weeds, anything in the bottom of the pot. And just snip them off. It's a job I love doing at this time of the year. As I say, February is fantastic. Um, I always like to sow some sweet peas in September, October, and I think these were a little bit later last year. I think it was November when I sold them last year. And uh, of course, November's supposed to be cold, but what we had up here in the northeast back end of November it was really warm, and of course, the, the sweet pea seeds just run away. But once I brought them up and put them in the bottom polytunnel, and uh, the climate changed completely in there. It's just nice and cool, two mesh doors either end. The, the, the wind blows free and it's just there. Uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic for, for, for bringing on winter perennials. Now, uh, before I knock off this, we'll, we'll give you a quick look in the bottom. We've got all the winter perennials in there and they're, uh, they're rocking away. But, uh, once again with this one, I'm just going to snip it there. Two sets of leaves below at the bottom. First class little plant. So I've done, I've got two, four there. I'll fill this tree up, I'll get a, I'll get a good dozen in there. And that'll be that. There's some lovely little plants amongst them. It is some long ones, you can see, you can see the water dripping off them. As I say, well there's about there, there's about five seeds, four seeds in this one. I normally plant about three seeds per pot. I must have misjudged that one. I can count one, two, three, four. Four seeds in that pot, so I must have slipped the one. Anyway, it's going to get the same treatment. Snip off, snip off, snip off, on that one, on that one. There we are. First grass. There's no reason that one, there's a little bit of grass I pulled out. Of course, just, just check them over, make sure there's no uh, couple of people online. Uh, last week complained about the white fly and the cabbages and that. Bit of garlic in the water, make a garlic spray up and give them a good blast of that. That's all these will get. I'll make a garlic spray up through the week and uh, they can get a good a good wash with that. But, uh, apart from that, fantastic. Here's another one there. They're really healthy, strong little plants. There's lots grown away from the base, lots of sage shoots. So I'm, uh, I'm quite happy just nipping these top runners off. Like that. And as I say, what it'll do, it'll transfer all the, all the power to them little side shoots and uh, they'll grow up nice and bushy and you'll have first, first class little plants for planting out, as I say, end of March or whenever you want. They're quite happy in them pots. I know there's roots coming out the bottom, but they're uh, lovely strong white roots here. But they're in a good mix, they're, they're in the 3-2-1 mix. Uh, as you say, all you have to do is check up on some of these videos. I might start off next week with a video with the 3 2 one mix, how I make it. I know I've got a couple of mixes to make up for the strawberries, I've got them to put up. Uh, so what I might do with next week's video, I mean start off with a mixture, get to make sure you how to do a mixture, and what I use it for, and of course, do the strawberries, and I've got to go outside, and I've got to, my first job next month, no, well, this month, no, February, is to tend to the raspberries, and actually all the fruit trees. The grapevines I've already started doing, I like to get a, I like to give them a good weed note, a good bag full of manure around it, and a good handful of sulphate of um, potash. 
sprinkle around the plants and that gives them that first spring feeding. Of course, you, you might think it's still winter, but um, the plants will be starting to waken up soon. So if that feeds there already for them, uh, come March time, the sap will be rising in all the plants and they'll be starting a formation on the buds. So if they've got the root, if they've got the feed at the roots, perfect. So I'll knock off and we'll nip it in the bottom polyton and we'll just have a quick look at the, um, some of that winter uh, seedling that I've uh, the, the perennials that we've uh, been potting up, okay? Okay, right. Well, looks like Roger's already beaten his tooth. Uh, we've got, um, he's taking them down to water everything this morning. Um, got early polyanthus here. We've got our foxgloves there. Absolutely fantastic plant here. First class, nine centimetre pots. Yeah, be perfect then for planting out in the marsh time. Absolutely loads. They've really been growing well. Foxgloves again. Uh, I grew quite a few of these. These are the larkspur. I tried this year. They're a perennial. Uh, they're a hardy annual. Um, but uh, you can plant them at the end of the year. And by the springtime, you've got a first class plant ready for planting out, and that's what these are. They're a new one. They're the lollipop ones. Hellenium. So all they need now is a good clean up. Dead leaves off them. And of course, they may want a little bit of a feeding. So Roger's taking them down off the shelving to get more watered. That's a polyanthus we potted up just a couple of weeks ago. And they're absolutely rumping away. So first class. And a tree of Locksburg. And we've got a couple of trays of uh, daisy here. They're looking great, the Bellis daisy. Absolutely fantastic little plants. Lovely. They'll be great for planting out in the springtime. <laughs> it's so easy to plant them. Um, plant perennials. It's just the after care. There's a couple of trays of foxgloves there that I haven't gotten around to potting up yet, but uh, no doubt I'll get uh, I'll get onto that. There's more bellas up there and pansies, but uh, we've got a really good selection there. Uh, and here we've got a spring cabbage and well, spring cauliflower. This is in the bottom poly tunnel. So this tunnel's full. It's been weeded out again this morning by the look of it. We've just been in there and you've been. Digging away, there's a few nettles coming through, but no doubt we'll get them cleared out soon. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm really pleased with the perennials just here. They're going away really well. Plenty of plenty of trees. The pansies are looking a little bit sad at the moment, but uh, no doubt I'll get stuck into them next week. I'll get them all cleaned up. Just a case of this, maybe go through it, put all the tops off it. Be that wind blowing like uh, blowing a the hole there now. I've got the fruit bushes, I've got the, the blueberry, and I've got the the gooseberry there, they've just been repotted up in the fresh pot, so there we And then up the side here, we've got my Duke of York potatoes in there. There's, uh, there's 12 boxes, early potatoes, and then in the big tunnel next door, we've got the Swift, three rows of Swift. So we've got plenty of potatoes to be getting on with this year. But yeah, we're, we're doing really well. We're uh, pleased there with, with how we're getting on. Right, so I'm going uh, to call it a day. I'll leave you with the, the last couple of pictures of the polytunnel. And uh, I'm going to get away back down home. I'll get the last of these uh, sweet peas finished off. And then we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves away back while they're still blowing a hole up here. We'll just leave it for the time being. Hopefully we can get a little bit of work done tomorrow. But uh, I'll see you all again next week, hopefully. And we'll get on to these. Uh, we'll get on to making the mix first off. We three to one mix and then we'll uh, we'll have a look at these raspberries. We've got the stuff up here, we've got the, the potash and we've got the uh, bags of horse manure. So we'll do a little bit of clean out. There's a couple of these um there's a couple of these bushes that I haven't done yet, so I might start in here. That's the um that's a grape vine that I'm keeping, that's a new one. I, I took uh, I took the new cuttings off there. So what we'll do here, we'll put a, some horse manure on there, we'll give it a good soaking. because yeah, I need moisture at the roots now. As I say, the sap will be rising. Uh, at the end of this month and the next month and you should start and see a bit of life coming into them buds but we'll take you through step by step on how we'll, we'll look after our vines and uh, we'll start off in the new video next week okay so if you want to catch you up through a week you can still get one on our facebook page which is jeff Foreman on the plot just give her a bell and we'll uh, we'll get you signed up and you can chat with her through the week on the internet okay i'll see you all again soon bye for now